الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قبل brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Welcome to this installment of Study Al Islam. I am Imam Fahim Shoaib of Oakland, California. Currently, in this Study of Al Islam uh, Life Topics series, we are presenting the night journey of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayers and peace be upon him, formerly entitled the Isra wa Mi'raj. Uh, my presentation this morning will be on. Jesus and John, who are on level two of the seven levels through which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayers and peace be upon him, ascended on his night journey. As a reminder, what's, what's most important for us to see is that all of the figures on each of the seven levels of the Prophet's night journey are types. We should see them as personifications of qualities, personifications of features, personifications of properties existing in all human beings. They're to be understood as graduations of human potential that are to be developed in all human beings, not just in Prophet Muhammad, nor just in Muslims. They are qualities of all human beings. And it's the full realization of these potentials, properties, qualities, properties, uh, which will enable a human being who so develops them to live the full life that Allah created them for. And of course, that's our aspiration. An important frame for this is uh, in the national broadcast to the Muslim community in his leadership in 1980. Imam Muhammad said, Now for all these years that I have been working with the locks of secret knowledge, nothing has been as rewarding to me as knowing that actually exactness in Scripture is abstract, and abstract in Scripture is exactness. Mm. Scripture, he says, will use figurative speech and figurative expression, figurative speech and figurative expression and abstract symbols to address what is actual, what is scientific, what is very real. Figurative means concepts that have to be seen outside of the picture they are given in. This is very important, this, and I say for those who identify themselves as students of Imam Wazidim Muhammad, this is an axiom. I mean, you, you, I say hold on to that like any other mathematical principle or logical principle, and or logical principle. Like you say, things equal to the same thing are equal to each other. Okay, that's the principle, that's the maximum, right? When we talk about words make people from Imam Muhammad, very simple, but it's an important maximum. This is a very important maxim, that scripture will use figurative expression, figurative speech, and abstract symbols to address what is actual, what is scientific, what is very real. And just in case you wonder, oh, well, you know, but uh, this is from the seal of the prophet, this is not scripture. Yes, when the imam uses the language scripture, he's not just talking about uh, Quran. He's not just talking about Quran. He's not just talking about the Bible. He's talking about uh, what has been uh, written in the laws and the principles in creation. That's one, but much more uh, close from the literal point of view, from a literary point of view. It includes it includes things like hadith and uh, Bible, myth. All those are also part and parcel of the word in the in the vocabulary of the imam of the word scripture okay so this sirah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi, and another another way of of seeing and understanding that as well meaning in 
inshallah, if you need to be made more comfortable with it. Uh, when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and she was asked um, what was the life of the Prophet, she said the Prophet's life was the life of the Quran. He was the Quran walking. Okay? So he was the Quran walking. Was it only when he was literally physically walking that he was the Quran? Or was it also a Quran when he was talking? <laughs> was it also a Quran when he re- gives the reports? Uh, which a part of which is this this uh, from the Sirah of the Prophet. Yes, this is a part of it. And the Bible talks about, and the Word became flesh, right? So what the Prophet said, did, or approved in his life and in his role as a Prophet, that is a part of Scripture as well. But I'm only saying that for the benefit of others. I have no doubt about it, and it's very easily defended if, if, if it's challenged. But just understand that, understand that. And when you learn and when you read Imam Muhammad's language, you, you understand, okay, great. So you see the way he uses scripture as a term in other speeches, addresses, or what have you. You say, oh, okay, so scripture also means, and I say again, and Allah knows best what I just told you, that it means and it includes. Now, in this installment, we're addressing level two, Jesus and John, sometimes called John the Baptist, uh, according to the Bible. And in Quranic language, it's Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary, and Yahya. Uh, during Imam's retreat in 1999, Randolph, Virginia, Imam Muhammad said that the, that the level of Jesus and John on level two on this plane represents uh, the spirit in that matter. I read the uh, beginning of uh, the beginning of the whole quote. He says that. In the second level or plane is Christ Jesus and John, representing the spirit in that matter. Now, mind you, of course, this quote comes out of the whole text of what the Imam is saying. So when he says the spirit in that matter, he's pointing back to our human form, which again, by, with one label, is called Adam. It says it represents the spirit in that form. So hold on and focus on the spirit. That's the Thing that's being described, okay? The spirit in that matter, one representing, meaning one part of the spirit, one representing the matter that holds the whole thing. That's Adam. Because after all, all of these seven evolved out of Adam. So it starts with Adam and then everyone evolved out of Adam. Adam, he goes on to say, is the potential in the man that God made. Okay, that is the seven comes out of the potential that is represented by Adam. Right? The material that he made. So the second level represents the spirit in the matter. And the spirit expresses itself mainly in two descriptions. One is positive. The other is negative. Jesus is the positive. John is the negative. Peace be upon the prophet. Jesus came to affirm, and John came to denounce. But both are the same spirit. I'm quoting the Imam. In man's spiritual body is the need to affirm and the need to reject or denounce. That's why they are on the same plane. Not because they are equal in their contribution, but because they are equal in their nature. They're the same nature. All right? So, brief summation of what the Imam said there. He takes us to, point us to the second level. And this is also after having explained to us who Adam was. Then he reminds us that Adam represents that original potential out of which all the other levels grow. And the level that we're speaking to today, level two, is the spirit that arises out of that matter being identified as Adam. And then that spirit expresses itself in two uh, ways. One positive, one negative. One affirming, one denying. Right? Okay. So that's, this is what the Imam said. 
And of course, obviously in the text of his address, he goes further. Uh, but for our purposes today, it's enough to understand the relationship between level one and level two. Adam is level one in the progression, and he represents the five senses as an anatomical feature of our human existence. So it's just think about think about yourself as a structure, as a as a component, as, as components. If you see yourself as components, then okay, your life begins. You have the body, and in the body is the five senses. That's Adam. Body is born, body born with five senses, that's Adam. Right? Adam is level one in the progression, and he represents the five senses as an anatomical feature of our human existence. Now, in level two, Jesus and John represent the elaborated function. Now, here's those two words, those of you who are taking notes. The elaborated function. So take those two words, elaborated function. The elaborated function of the five senses. There's the five senses, and that's what they do, right? So the elaborated function of the five senses in the world and how they function to benefit our existence. First you have them, then you have to use it. It's just like you have a car, right? You got to say, yeah, I got a car. But, okay, okay, sitting there, but what do you do with it? You can have it, but its value is, what it does for you, its utility. But first you have to have it, then you have to use it. First you have the five senses, now the five senses have to work. Level one, five senses. Level two, the elaborated function of the five senses. The Quran in the 78th verse of the 16th chapter of the Quran, a translation or expression of it is this. It is he who brought you forth from the wombs of your mother when you knew nothing. That's important to begin with. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam first and left him in a state of basically, I'm going to use the word inertness to move on, uh, where the angels didn't know who, who, what it was or who it was, uh, and Iblis was also there, he didn't know who it was, what it was. Uh, a, lot, a lot of tale to be told there, but just understand that this first sentence of this 78th verse of the 16th chapter is just telling us. First, you were born physically. There was no operation, uh, nothing happening at that very point. And inside this one verse, then comes, this is what happens next. And he gave you hearing and sight and intelligence and affection. Little things it is that you give. right? So inside of that verse, you have both of the things that we're speaking to. The first part of it brought you forth from the wombs of your mother before, and when you knew nothing, that was Adam before Allah had breathed into him of his spirit. So that was Adam before. And then he gave you hearing, sight, intelligence, and affection. Now something is, now something starts to function there. And that's Jesus and John. Jesus and John represent the five senses in operation. Uh, seventh chapter, 179th verse also points out to us, or rather points out to us, uh, what happens when that uh, progression fails. What happens when that progression fails? Seven, 179. It says, many are the jinn and men we have made for hell. And so that, that tells you, sorry, it's telling you there's a failure there. Uh, and it says... And then it explains how that happens. It says, they have hearts wherewith they understand not, eyes wherewith they see not, ears wherewith they hear not. They are like cattle, nay, more misguided, for they are heedless of warning. So uh, the first verse that we read, 1678, is speaking about Adam plus Jesus and John, meaning Adam and an operative Jesus and John. Five senses and properly elaborated functioning five senses. But then in the next, the ones that wind up in hell that don't have the best life are those, yeah, you have the five senses, but you don't know how to use them. You have the five senses, but they're not operating. So that's Adam without progressing to Jesus and John. Imam Muhammad, he gives the following commentary regarding the fact that everyone who has five senses aren't necessarily using them correctly. At Malcolm X College in Chicago in 1994, he said, 
if your five senses won't bring you out of darkness, out of confusion, out of falsehood, then you have five senses that you think you're using, but you're not using them. Your five senses are enslaved by falsehood. He also said in one of the public publications uh, we received uh, by the work of Imam Ronald B. Shahid, uh, Thoughts for Searchers, on page 22, the Imam said, Muhammad the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If a river or a stream of water would pass by and you would wash in that water five times a day, would there be any impurities left? His followers said, No. The Imam said he was telling them in a wise way, Respect your five senses before there is, because there is a stream a stream that comes and you wash in it five times and there is no impurities left in it after five times. And for those of us who have, as a part of our history, that experience in the nation of Islam, uh, it says, uh, think five times and then you, and you might be correct, right? So, so the five senses are critical when you use them, right? So Jesus and John on level two represent the proper elaborated function of the five senses. So explicitly, so he's like, okay, well, who is Jesus and John? Okay, what did he say this morning? He said that level two represents the proper elaborated function of the five senses. Adam is the five senses, the proper elaborated function of the five senses, that is Jesus and John. So there's what the five senses are, that's Adam, and there's what the five senses do. That's Jesus and John. So since Adam's beginning is the beginning of the man of intellect, this is a critical thing to understand about Adam. All, all of this, everything that we talk about, this is why you're going to get different um, emphasis, different uh, facets, different aspects, different perspectives of each of these seven levels when the, uh, the wonderful group that has been gathered together by the study of Islam team uh, so you're going to have different perspectives uh, from it. Each one of the like a diamond, like a diamond, you know, different light and brilliance comes from different faces, different facets of it. Uh, the focus, the focus that we're taking, is the movement of human intellectual cognitive development from the the bodily senses, from the existence of the body, what's in the body, the capability of the body, the potential, and how it evolves as it evolves to and through uh, and within and towards uh, the human intellectual cognitive destiny. Uh, and Adam's beginning is the beginning of the man of intellect. Allah says, Alama Adam ala asma'a kullaha. He taught Adam the knowledge of the nature of all things. Remember, go back to the, uh, uh, I'll just reference it. I'm not going to read it again. Seven, the 78th verse of the 16th chapter, uh, one part of that, the first part of that, you should read as Adam, the one that God made, formed out of clay, figurative expression, formed out of clay and left him in that state for 40 periods. Then he breathed into him of, of his spirit. Okay, so you have, first you have the Adam. And so this alama Adam alasma kullaha, just take that as Allah breathing into him of his spirit. And what is that? He taught Adam the nature of all things. That's an education process. That's our beginning. That's our our life begins with what Allah taught us of the knowledge of the nature of all things. That is an intellectual beginning. It start our life starts with the knowledge that God put in our nature. And our development is the development of the knowledge that God put in our nature. So Adam's beginning is the beginning of a man of intellect. The progression of Adam is the progression of human intellectual development. That's, that's just really very important. Uh, what, was the, what was the first of the last revelation that Allah said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Iqra bismi rabbika khala, read. Imam Muhammad explains to us that all of the processes, the principles, the laws, the operation and creation, they are all communications. They are all communications, and we have to learn how to get, receive, and understand, apprehend those communications. How can you do that without the growth of intellect? Right? And so, therefore, this is the beginning. Our beginning is the beginning of intellect, and our growth is the growth of intellect. Right? 
as a progression in human cognitive development, this second level being the elaborated function of the five senses, this is all, this is all a part of the process. First you have the five senses, then you have to use them, right? Because the proper functioning of the five senses facilitates our human ability to interpret and to label what we experience from our environment and respond appropriately, right? The environment is communicating to us. Okay, use your five senses to extract from it what it is communicating. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it bless us to understand it. While we won't take time right now to talk about it, another maxim from Imam Muhammad is creation-supported social logic. Creation-supported social logic in the simplest, briefest way that I can express it is the communications communicating all the time, telling us the laws of God, telling us the will of God. So, Iqra Bismillah when we read that creation in the name of our Lord, who created it, then we can extract from it principles. And when we extract from it principles, we extract from it its logic, and then we translate, transfer, and apply what we've extracted to our society, then we build a society on the basis of creation-supported social logic, then it will be a society that fulfills the call, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But you can't do that without intellect, you can't do that without the kinds of disciplines that require that are required uh, to carry that out. So just going back to the simplest uh, aspect of it, the, the elaborated function of the five senses, the five senses tell us what's bright, what's dark, what's hard, what's soft, what's loud, what's quiet, what's sweet, what's sour, what's fragrant, what's odorous. All these functions of five senses extract information, tell us uh, how and how to respond uh, to uh, what we're experiencing from the environment. That's something we should go towards, that's something that we should go away from. So that's the elaborated function of the five senses, and so we have to pay attention to the information that comes through the five senses and respond accordingly and respond most naturally. So I repeat. The scripture will use, as the imam said, will use figurative expression, figurative speech, and abstract symbols to address what is actual, what is scientific, what is very real. Now, according to the latest in cognitive development of science, this stage is where, meaning this is from the scientists, this is what they, they don't, they, whether they're Muslims or not, that's not even an aspect of this investigation. This is what the latest science from the cognitive development of scientists are saying up about this natural progressional stage of human beings without reference to Islam or Isra or Mi'raj, nothing. They say that the next stage after birth comes in about three years old. I should probably just read the quote. <laughs> is that this stage is where the human being develops what they call logical pairing capability. Logical Pairing, P-A-I-R-I-N-G, capability. It's a deve- They look for, you know, the child is born, they go into, they take them to the, um, what do you call it, pediatric uh, doctor, and so they have these scales, they have these ranges, they expect this to be happening about this time, and that to be happening about that time. And so they have their, uh, their levels also. I have found that they match up one through seven when understood with the planes that we're talking about. And, and in their scaling, at the second level, what's expected, the expected capability is the logical pairing capability. So I'll, I'll quote them now. It says, the second stage of cognitive development begins to unfold at about age three. Now, when the child thinks about objects and acts upon them, she reproduces pairings on the basis of size, shape, color, and other properties. Can you see that information comes from the five senses? Her rationale for each pairing is derived from the repertoire she has acquired through previous experiences. That is, the five senses brought the information in. Now I'm learning how to use the information that the five senses came in to create pairs. Right? For this action, she establishes additional mental constructs about the world and how the objects and events in it are related. All her thinking is characterized by the ability to match two objects together on the basis of one common attribute or to link two events on the basis of one relationship, this continues to be the dominant way in which she thinks and solves problems 
until about age six. So then that moves on to the next level, right? So this is non-Muslim material scientists studying human development, and they say the same function of this duality at the second stage of expected development for a human being. So there's a match between this science. And the imam says that uh, uh, true science is the correct interpretation of the material creation. True science is the correct interpretation of material creation. This is a critical point, brother and sister, for us to understand. So we don't need science to confirm, to confirm, meaning that uh, what we say is true because science says it is true. No, it's the other way around. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives us through the Quran and what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brings us. We just have to learn how to read the science out of it. And then when we learn how to read the science out of it, then we can go look at what the scientists also have theorized and developed and experimentally demonstrated. And then we can say, based on what we have received from from the science of our original nature and the nature of it related to creation, they say, yeah, you know what? You got that right. It's not for them to say, oh, no, that doesn't match, that doesn't match our theory, so, so your scripture must be wrong. Your hadith, your prophet must be wrong. No, sir. You go back to the lab and see what you can come up with. Because what we have is correct. It's haq, mashallah. So in Imam Muhammad's commentary about this level, he stated that the spirit expresses itself in mainly two descriptions. One is positive, the other is negative. And in man's spiritual body is the need to affirm and the need to reject or denounce. All of this, brothers and sisters, elaborates on just higher and higher and more and more abstract planes Alhamdulillah, and it's, it, it, and it's wonderful. But we need to understand it on its most fundamental uh, plane first, and it's all about affirmation, denial, the function of the five senses, etc. So this is the very nature of the function of the five senses, what the imam says, the positive and the negative, the affirmation, denial, the, 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 the affirming and the rejecting, right? This is the very nature of the function of the five senses, to inform us, meaning it brings information in from our environment and tells us, oh, no, reject that. Oh, yes, accept that, right? Move toward that no, or move away from that. If those things are not functioning, our lives are going to have problems, as Quran says on, on all levels, where it says, it may be that you love a thing that's bad for you and hate a thing that's good for you. Well, what's going to help us from failing uh, protect us from failing to do the right thing in our lives, the proper functioning of our five senses, right? We have to ask ourselves, does it smell good or does it smell bad? Does it sound harmonious or does it sound discordant? Does it taste good or does it taste bad? Does it feel pleasant or does it feel unpleasant? Does it look beautiful or does it look ugly? And, of course, we have our higher levels of moral, ethical, spiritual experiences where we have to ask the same question. So this second heaven, this second plane of the Isra wa Mi'raj, where Jesus and John are seen and equated uh, as twins, if you will, on that second level, it represents the progression of the human cognitive development to the stage where we have the proper elaboration of the five senses. So alhamdulillah, uh, that's, that's uh, what we'll say about level two. Uh, for those of you who are with us sometime, we're going to uh, continue this on our uh, Sunday broadcast, on the Clear Understanding broadcast. I'll just continue the subject matter. Um, so some join us on Facebook, some join us on Blog Talk Radio. But for this morning, for Al-Islam, the study Al-Islam, Alhamdulillah, um, that is what we have to say on level two. Jesus and John. Isa and Yahya, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. God's peace be on you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.